Good morning, beginning farmer friends. It is 4.10, sorry about the light, 4.10 a.m., which can only mean one thing. Well, it could be this chicken processing day, but it's not. It is farmer's market day, August 14th, and let me tell you, it is gorgeous outside if it can be gorgeous at 4.10 a.m. because it's like 60 degrees. That is not necessarily normal. We're gonna have a high of like 83 today. All of that is to say this, I am headed to the farmer's market. I really need to get cracking because I gotta get to the farmer's market, but it is going to be a crazy, crazy day today. So I thought I would take you along for the ride. I got my list of things I need to put into my little coolers. I got a reminder to get my pre-orders. Let's put stuff in coolers, load it onto the trailer. I need to wake up. I thought I'd take a quick second to show you the process that I use to fill these small coolers. These are the ones that I set on the table. First thing I do is reach into the freezer. I grab a freezer pack. Then I look and see what I'm getting. I come over to my brat freezer. I swing it open. And I know that I can put seven of one kind and eight of another kind in there. So it looks like I only got six lamb brats. So that one's gonna have six of them in there. I grab some of those. Put them in. More lamb brats are in. Then we got three, six, seven, eight bacon cheddar brats. An ice pack for the top. Keep everything as cold as possible. After I've got that loaded and secured, it comes out into the darkest of morning and into the trailer. I've got room for nine of them in here because I've got room for nine on my tables at the market. I need to keep loading. The other thing that I do is I use these reusable shopping bags so that there's less moisture accumulation on the packages in the cooler and I hope it keeps the cold in a little bit. It helps keep things sorted. I just think there's a lot of benefits all around. Grab some hot Italian sausage. And then when I've got the stuff in the bags, I come out to the cooler in the trailer, drop them in the cooler in the trailer. Oh yeah, I forgot every cooler gets an ice pack and a towel to again, try to keep things as cold as possible. Cold is the name of the game when it comes to the farmer's market. On the plus side, when it only tops out at like 84, like it's going to today, Things are easier to keep cool compared to like when it was 94 last weekend. Now that everything's loaded and I've got my daughter riding beside me, we've got about an hour drive up to our farmer's market spot on the corner of 2nd and Court in Des Moines. I guess I'll just see when we get there. It is now 6 a.m. and we are at the farmer's market. The trailer needs to be unloaded. Suburban needs to be unloaded. I'll just put it on time lapse. We'll show you the process. It is about 6.45, which means we are 15 minutes away from starting, and we've got our stand set up. I've got all my coolers with meat, and their signs are out in the front. We've got a new whole pasture-raised chicken sign right there. We got more signs around the corner here, our soap and our jam, money box, bacon suit, it's back there. It's not on me yet. That's how we set up for the morning now. I've got to go help my friend with some plastic sacks. Good morning, Cookie Gap farmers. <laughs> Good morning, Grade A Gardens <laughs> farmers. Jordan uh, doesn't do very well on keeping his stand stocked with plastic sacks. We'll try to keep him going for the entire day, but what I don't know. You, Ethan? What's going to be awesome today, Jordan? Uh, what are you going to sell out of first? Oh, carrots. Carrots. So back in the day when we used to set up over there two years ago, and yes, this is a turkey on my head, but we pretend it's a chicken. Like I was saying though, the early part of the day was our busiest part of the day because back then we mostly had regular customers, not random customers. 
Speaking of customers. Hey there, eggs. You gotta say eggs. How many? Okay. One dozen. If I can get two dozen, yep. I'm gonna take any away from here. Nope, two dozen is fine. Ten dollars. Give a dozen to my mom. Yeah. Still loves eggs. Still loves eggs. Hey, thanks, man. No problem. Thank you. You have a great day. Okay, as I was saying, we used to have all of our customers at the beginning, regular customers, but now with these coolers and the different location, I mean, it's only 30 feet away, but the flow of the crowd comes around this corner. They see the coolers. We're selling a ton more brats and things like that. Now from like 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock, somewhere in there, that's when we really can get busy. So for the next hour, two hours, we might just be standing around a little bit. It's 7.08. Basically, we sold eggs to regular customers. We'll see how the day goes. What do you think about dogs at your farmer's market? Are dogs a good thing at your farmer's market? Oh my goodness, we have lots of dogs. Mid-market update, and by mid I mean 8.32, so we're an hour and a half in. It's been a good market so far, better than the last few weeks as far as the way we started off the morning. How it's gonna go from here, we'll never know. Oh yeah, you're probably wondering what the hot seller has been so far. Ground lamb and then brats, just a variety of brats. Do you have a breakfast sausage? Yeah, we've got breakfast sausage and we have some small uh, eight ounce patties. Uh, how much How much you say? The breakfast sausage is 650 a pound and the patties are seven. These are the patties. And, and they have, uh, how many are there? There's eight. Yep, there are six. 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 Two ounce patties. So and then seven, up, uh, yeah, seven. or well, it's five forty-six. Five forty-six. Yeah, I'll take. I'll take that and try that. Sure, no problem. Day's going pretty good so far. We've had quite a bit of sales, especially the brats have been selling well today. I do want to tell you about this chicken hat, which actually is a turkey. It may look silly, but the number of people that come by and say, hey, I saw your hat, or they say, hey, nice hat, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do I get to leave my stand, but when I do, I come to see how the man with the plastic sacks is going. I need more plastic sacks, Ethan. What? I asked you to do one thing last week, Jordan. Do you need more sacks? I might, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go get more plastic sacks from him, man. We got a few. Oh, he's got dozens. Yeah. Okay. As in dozen. Thanks. Jordan, how's the market? You almost sold all your carrots. What did you get? You got like a bunch. One left. Looking like a lonely bunch. You need carrots? No, I don't like nope. carrots. They're a vegetable, right? Hello? Yeah, he doesn't eat veggies. I'm kidding. I eat carrots. Only good meat from me. That's it. The market is done. We have to pick up now. We are starting to pick up. We started to pick up early, actually. Not like tearing down our tent or anything, but like putting meat in coolers from our little coolers because it's time to go make hay. And uh, it means a long day. So I'm gonna put the camera down and we're gonna unpack, bring the trailer out here in about 12 minutes and load everything up and get out of here. That's it, we're packed up. Thankfully there is a hand washing stand right over here. My hands get dusty with that trailer. That is one thing we need to figure out. If you have any ideas on how to seal that trailer better, so that it doesn't fill up with dust, I am all ears. Now, I'll see you when we get to the hay field. And here we are, it is 2.08 and I am ready to rake hay. It is dry, the hay looks very dry, very ready to be raked. There's only one thing left to do and that is to start raking, I guess. It looks like it could have gone yesterday, but we just, weren't able to do it yesterday, so we're gonna do it today and uh, get as much done as we can before the dew sets in, I guess. This is going to be a long day. It started at 4 a.m., it's 2.09 now. Like I said, we're gonna be going until the dew sets or until the sun sets, whichever works out best. I'm 
not gonna lie to you, there is something just extremely satisfying to me about making hay. The mowing process where you're just driving through and you're seeing the grass and the legumes, the alfalfa in this case there, and then you look behind the mower and it's gone, and the same thing while I'm raking as I'm going along and I'm seeing three windrows combined into one windrow behind me. It's just awesome and it's satisfying and it, it's satisfying in a lot of ways because it gives you some time in the tractor. I don't have a lot of farming where I get to spend time in the tractor and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I kind of like, you know, pulling up the old diesel tractor and putting it to work and, and seeing it do its thing. And, and then on the flip side, it's satisfying and knowing that, hey, we're putting up all the forages and the hay and we need to make it through this winter for our cattle, for our sheep. And that's really satisfying too. And to know that we're gonna have everything we need, plus we're gonna have plenty to sell as well. That's pretty cool. It does make for a really busy day though. The great thing about raking is that it just goes so fast. That field that I just finished, about a 20 acre field, took me like four hours, a little more than four hours to mow, to rake, like an hour and a half. I'm on to the next field right now. I'm gonna fold this one together and it's 3.46 p.m. That means I got up 12 hours ago. Oh my, that's hard to think about. can feel that or not but my air conditioning it's not working the little triangle inside the compressor pulley the pulley is spinning the little triangle is not spinning and I've learned from previous experience when the little triangle is not spinning or I guess in this case not spinning very well the air is not cold we are close to being done with this cutting of hay and it's got me thinking this has been a long day but Honestly, long days are not atypical days. I'm gonna rake a little more and then before we're done, I wanna talk about that. I don't know if you can hear that, I'm sure you can hear that, but I think I diagnosed my own problem. That pulley is squeaking, so I don't know if it's the compressor or what exactly is causing that. There is this thing right here that I can pull off and then makes it shut off which tells me I think that it's the compressor oh boyka all right here's what's gonna happen we need to unhook the rake put it in transport mode so that it's ready to go home and I don't forget it to put it in, and I don't forget to put it in transport mode that's what I'm trying to say then we need to put the flat foot not the jack but the one that goes on when I'm using it on the tractor and the three-point we need to lift it up off the truck with the loader then we need to put the the jack underneath or the the permanent jack underneath I guess I should say and then we got to move some bales around we'll see how fast we can do it I'm not gonna say that went well but in the end the spear is on the bale trailer is ready the rake is off the truck it could have got damaged but what's the worst that can happen to it the bed is gonna fall off because we're already at that point anyways. Time to collect bales and make sure I got a paycheck, a checkbook to pay the baler man. Here's what I'm thinking. It is just a bit after eight o'clock. Got eight bales on the trailer. Yeah, 
Oh. Got eight bales on the trailer. So as you can tell by this point, I am having a difficult time. I am trying to figure out how many bales I've been hauling in, and I'm counting my six bale trailer as having eight bales on it. It's not going very well, and basically what it's coming down to is my brain is tired. And at this point, I just start talking about how important it is that if you want to farm, that you really love farming because there's going to be days like this where you start so early in the morning and you go all day long. And this is not unique to farming. It is not unique to my kind of farming, direct market farming. It is, you know, something that's true of conventional farming, something that's true if you've got a hog house or row crops or whatever it is. And obviously there's countless other jobs that it's true of as well. And so my encouragement to anyone who is thinking about farming is that they think about farming. They think about what it'll take. They think about the time that it's going to take and they decide, you know, is this the life that I want to live? The same if you want to be a teacher or a doctor or whatever the job is, the profession is, the the that you want to go down. There are always aspects of something that you think, man, that's awesome. I remember in my life that I wanted to be a rock star. Well, if you think about being, okay, obviously I wasn't going to be one, but if you think about being a rock star, you got to realize that if you are truly a rock star, you're going to be gone a lot of time from the family. And is that what you want? I don't know. It got sappy. It got long. What I wanted to say is this, you know, when you jump into something, uh, make sure that it's something that you love, that you want to put your time in. Of course, there's going to be things about it that you don't like, that are difficult, that are hard, but on long days, it helps when you have the support of your family and friends, and I think I'll close with that. It's all right. It's all right. I do enjoy much of the farm, and I am thankful for it all, for my family, for their love and care, and for the creation that I am able to steward. It got a little sappy, didn't it? And a little long. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. I'll try to cut that down to make it not so long. Like, subscribe, put your air conditioner comments down below.